Have you applied for a U.S. visa and you received that dreaded 214B rejection or denial? Well, if you have, this video is for you. I'm going to take you through what exactly is 214B, what does it mean to you, and what can you do differently next time so you make sure you get approved. Hi, and thank you for joining me to talk immigration. My name is Andrea Shev. If you don't know me already, and if you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're back, thank you for joining me again. I am a U.S. immigration attorney, and I've been doing immigration for over 20 years. And I put together this channel to give you clear, concise, and easy to understand information about all different topics related to U.S. immigration. So let's now get into this video's topic of 214B denials. If you are the person out there that applied for a U.S. visa and you got that dreaded 214B denial, then this video you need to watch. So let's get into what exactly is 214B. 214B is a section of the U.S. immigration law. And if you get denied a visa under 214B, it means that you either did not prove that you qualified for the visa, or what this video is gonna focus on more, you did not overcome the presumption of immigrant intent. You did not provide sufficient evidence to the officer that you had sufficient ties to your home country and would return back to it at the termination of your visa. If you did not provide that information and the officer did not believe that information, then you were probably going to get a 214B denial. Now, remember, the hard part of this is that when you walk up to that officer in your interview, there's already a presumption against you. The officer usually will always come to the table with the presumption that you are not going to be returning, that you do have immigrant intent. So the burden really is on you to prove to them that you don't that at the end of your stay in the U.S., you will be returning home to your country. Now, what does a 214B denial look like if you haven't seen one already, which I hope you haven't, but a lot of you probably have. This is how it looks. Now, every consulate around the world phrases it a little bit differently, looks at it a little bit different, but this is an example of one letter that was received for a 214B denial. It explains that they didn't show sufficient ties. So if you got this type of letter, that means that you were denied under 214B. Now it is important to understand that not all types of non-immigrant visas you can be denied under 214B or require that you show sufficient ties to your home country. Like an H visa or an L visa does not have the requirement that you show sufficient ties to your home country. So if you're applying for one of those visas or your family's applying for support of one of those visas, then you don't have to worry about it and you're not going to be denied under 214B. So this video would not be for you with regard to having to learn or understand the idea of showing ties back to your home country. Another thing I want to get into really quickly before we continue on this journey of exploring the 214B and what you can do better next time in order to not get it, I want to make sure you understand the difference between refusal and denial because there is so much confusion out there that the consuls are causing because they're interchanging these words a lot. And I need you to understand that refusal does not always mean denial and denial always usually means denial that your case is done. So if you get refused on your case status online, that does not mean that you were denied. It could mean that they're waiting for information from you. It could mean that you gave them information and they're processing it. It could mean that you're an administrative processing. It could mean many, many things, but it doesn't always mean denial. When you get a denial, like a 214B denial, your case is done, it's closed. You can't give them more information, you can't appeal the case, it's closed. So your only alternative now is to reapply. You're allowed to reapply after being denied under 214B. Now what is the downside of reapplying? Well, you lost that visa processing fee you paid the last time you applied. That's unfortunate and they're not gonna give it back to you. And also you're going to have a negative tick mark against you because you they will know that you did not you were denied or refused previously when you applied for this visa. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but it's not the end of the world. You can still reapply and you still can get approved even if you've been denied in the past. What is the upside? The upside is that now you know better. Now you can get educated and get more information and get more prepared for the next time you go for your interview so you can get that approval. 
Now below this video, I have a free interview guide and checklist for you that I created using all my 20 years of experience, tips and pointers that I've found over the years works to help you get approved for your visa. So go below this video and click that for that free guide. Also underneath that video is a guide so you can get a consultation with me. I will work with you one-on-one. -on -one. We'll work together to get everything in order for your particular case if you want. And you can sign up for that consultation below. And I can step through with you step by step what you need for your particular situation to get as good a chance as you can to get that approval. So if you want my personal help, please click below, sign up for a consultation with me, and we will walk through exactly what you need to bring and what you did wrong last time or what you did right last time. And so we can get you that approval the next time you go in for the visa. Okay, now let's get into what things you could do and bring to your interview to establish strong ties to your home country so you don't get that dreaded refusal denial again. One thing you have to remember is that the officer is doing a subjective analysis. It's their opinion. It's their feeling of if you have overcome that presumption of immigrant intent. There is no magic word you could say or no magic document you can produce for them to make them for sure guarantee to give you that visa. They are looking at you as a whole. They're looking at how you're acting. They're looking at what you're saying. They're looking at how you present yourself. They're looking at the documentation you provide. They're looking at all these things and they're looking at them in less than three minutes usually. So you have a very, very, very small window in order to convince the officer that you have overcome the presumption of immigrant intent, that you will be returning back home and you have sufficient ties to your home country so there's no worry that you're going to overstay or stay in the United States past the time allotted for this non-immigrant visa. All right? So one thing also to understand is that the officer will not ask you a lot of times directly questions that you want him to ask or her to ask you. You have to come to them with a plan, with an idea of what you're going to be doing, where you're going to be staying. What is the plan? What are you going to do? They want to know the details from you and they're not going to ask you. That's not enough. Can you give me more? What about this? What about that? Oh, did you not see that? Oh, don't you want to bring up that? They're not going to help you through that interview. They're going to say, what is the purpose of your trip to the United States? And that is your goal to tell them what is your purpose to the United States? And also in that, you need to make sure that you overcome that presumption of immigrant intent. So make sure you are organized and make sure you bring with you and you put all the pieces together so you have the best chance of getting that approval at the end of that three minute interview. All right, so what are some of the things that you should talk about or bring with you to prove these sufficient ties back to your own country? So let's talk about a few of them and also things that you can bring to support those arguments. So what about relatives? I have a spouse. I have children. I have el elderly parents that I have to take care of. Those are great things to show them and you can actually prove to them that you actually have children, that you actually have a spouse, that you actually have elderly parents. So you, they will know that you have to come back to take care of them. Especially if you're a caregiver for somebody and you're legally responsible for them, it's important to show them that you have to come back. You can't leave them here. Okay, that's one. Rental agreements. If you owe, if you're renting an apartment and you have to come back and you show them the rental agreement, because if you don't come back, you're going to have to keep paying rent while you're abroad. And that's a big reason why they would think you have to come back. You have a rental agreement that you have to keep paying for. Job. I have a job. I have to get back. How do you prove that? You prove it with your actual employment agreement or better yet, a letter from your employer stating, I'm only giving this employee two weeks off or three weeks off or a month off and they must return to the job or they will lose it. This is their job, this is their salary, and this is their vacation pay or whatever that they're going to get and put that on the employer stationery and provide that to the officer. That helps a lot. Property. I have property here. I have a business here. I have to get back to. Bring the proof of the business. Bring the proof that you have so many employees or stuff that you have to get back to wherever you're coming from. Very important. Funds are always also a nice thing to bring. It's always good to bring a bank statement to show that you have sufficient funds for the trip so the officer won't think that you're not going to have enough money in order to get back 
home or you're not gonna have enough money to be there and not have to work or do something you shouldn't be doing. So it's always good to bring bank statements. School enrollment forms, great. If you're in a university or you're studying and you are paid your tuition and you're gonna be starting, it's really great to bring that documentation because it's like you're saying, well, I have to be back here in January to start school. Here's my university enrollment that I've already paid for, so I need to be back on January 1st in order to start school. That is a really good tie. Projects and events. That's something that people don't think about too much. Projects, if you have a project like you're building a house or you're doing something that's a project that has deadlines that you need to be back for, that's a really good one to show the officer or to talk about to the officer. Or what about special events? My daughter's getting married. My, my first, my youngest is having a baby. You know, my grandfather is training a hundred. So all these things are really important events that the officer will think, hmm, I think that they'll come back for that because that's a pretty big event. And they have documentation. Now remember, the officer won't always ask to see the documentation. Remember, they only have a very, very short period of time. But I tell all my clients, you bring that documentation with you, you have it organized in front of you, and if the officer wants to see it, you have it. Now, they don't always listen, but they do understand if you provide them documentation. So just because you're saying something, it doesn't mean that the officer believes it. But if you're saying something and you have support to provide to them, to support what you're saying, the officer is going to be more likely to believe what you're saying and take into consideration in making their determination. Now, what I suggest you do is, you know, you say everything and you have the documentation there and you tell the officer, and I brought with me you know, the school enrollment form or the invitation for my grandfather's 100th birthday or my rental agreement or, you know, whatever it is you're bringing to support or my letter from my employer. And you have it there. So if the officer wants to see it, they can. If they don't want to see it, you can't do anything about it. But at least you're showing them that I'm bringing things with me to prove to you that I have every intention of returning back to my home country and I will not be staying and violating any visa in the United States. Now let's talk about other factors to consider. So we've already talked about actual reasons you have to return, documentation you should bring with you, um, but now let's talk about other things that the officer will be looking at to make a determination if you have overcome that presumption of immigrant, immigrant intent. Your mannerisms. Are you looking at them in their eye? Are you fidgeting? Are you nervous? Are you sweating? Are you like, like completely out of sorts. Honesty, they're looking for, are you being honest? They can compare your answers to what's on the DS-160 application, to what's on the application you applied for with USCIS. They're looking for honesty. Honesty, the way you present yourself, what you're wearing. How many times have you applied for this visa before? Like, is this your eighth time? Then, you know, all those things they're looking at. What is the purpose of your actual travel? When they ask you, what is your purpose of coming to the United States or traveling to the United States? And if you just say, I'm going to go to study or I'm going to go to visit, they know that already because if you're applying for an F visa, they know that you're going to study. And if you're applying for a B visa, they know you're going to visit. But what is your plan? Explain to them what is the plan? What is the plan? What are you going to do? You're going to go there, stay for so long and return. What are you going to do while you're there? Why do you want to go there? Why that university? Why that city? What is the plan? Where are you going to stay? What are you going to see? Who are you going to see? What are you going to do? Explain to them and give them the plan so they can feel comfortable in knowing that there is a plan and the end of that plan is to return back to your home country. Be organized. Make sure when you walk up to that window, you don't have papers flying everywhere. You know, maybe you want to organize it nicely in front of you with post-its. So if they ask you for something, or if you're trying to explain something to them, you can easily pull out the document and give it to them. Remember, they have a very, very short period of time and they have to make their decisions very quickly. So if you're stumbling through all this paperwork to find the letter from your employer, they're going to be like, okay, over, done. I mean, first of all, they're going to get annoyed. And second of all, you're not going to be able to get them the documentation you need to prove your intentions. So it's more than just documentation. It's more than just what you say. It's how you're dressed, how you appear, how you look at them, how you interact with them, how clear and succinct you answer questions, how how carefully planned is your plan for this trip that you're taking to the United States. 
they look at that whole thing and then they make a subjective opinion if they're going to grant it to you or they're not going to grant it to you. So it is key that you take this entire video as a whole and everything that I'm talking about in it, not only the documentation, but the state of mind of the officer, but also how you are presenting yourself to the officer. All of those factors go into the decision that the officer is gonna make in order to grant you that visa or deny you that visa, okay? If you want help, I am here for you. Reach out, sign up for a consultation with me. I will work with you independently and make sure that you get ready so you have the best chance possible to get approved for your visa. Every single consulate around the world, and there's lots of them, every US consulate, every country has quite a few in itself, but if you're applying in India versus you're applying in Italy versus you're applying in Australia, every country has different things they look at, they have different presumptions going into the interviews, they have different things they're looking for, so let me help you make sure that you are ready for your particular case at that particular consulate at that time and you get yourself approved for that visa. Sign up below for that consultation if you're interested. I am happy to help you and I hope you reach out to me so I can help you get that visa approved. And you don't have to get another dreaded 214B denial. I really hope this video was helpful to all of you out there. I really believe that all of you have a chance to get approved. It's just about getting yourself prepared properly to go into the consulate so then you have everything that you need to present to them so that they can give you a positive approval at the end of those three minutes. Let me help you. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for watching. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are in this world and look forward to seeing you on my next video.